Hey, what's going on everybody? This is John J. Gaiman on the mic here coming at you with a brand new episode of the Earlham Team Builder Dynasty here in NCAA 14 featuring that college football revamp. And today we got ourselves another road game, this time playing against the defending champions of the MAC Conference. We're playing against the Manchester Spartans, man, which we Corso is going to be rocking with them. They have a B overall squad with B plus offense and a B defense. You know, and have one of the better offenses in the country. They have the 23rd ranked scoring offense in the nation. Our defense, though, is pretty solid. We have one of the better defenses in the country, particularly our run defense. And, uh, you know, they... They enjoy running the ball a little bit, so that's going to be an interesting matchup to watch out for. But that being said, though, this is going to be a huge game for us. Let me tell you why this game is going to be huge as we go ahead and check out the standings real quick. We are in a deadlock. You know, we are definitely still in this race to go ahead and win our division and go to the conference championship game at the end of the year. We're currently three and one, but the teams that we're facing, we play against Manchester today, you know, who's three and one. And then at the end of the season, we also play against Anderson and Hanover, who are both still undefeated in this conference. So it's gonna be a big game for us. You know, and this is gonna help us find out where we stand within our own division because it seems like we're definitely in the better division of the MAC conference, so it's going to be a good one, man, for sure. So make sure you smash that like button for me, as well as hit subscribe. You have to be brand new and like what you see here on the channel. Let's go ahead and get this game in against Manchester. Let's get it. So let's go, man. Con well, we're playing against the defending conference champions on the road, but we got a new look squad starting off three and one. So big game for the both of us here as, you know, we stay all, a lot of teams, you know, deep in this fight, man, to, you know, come out of the West Division, definitely a tougher division in, you know, this conference. As Hakeem Short, he gets a nice 22 gain of the middle. You'll love to see it. As we're almost across midfield already, Miami dropping back, uh, breaks a tackle to avoid a sack and is able to deliver a nice ball to St. Valhelm for a good five-yard gain, so I love to see it. But can we pick up this first down here, third and two coming up, and no, we cannot. And that's what truly hurts us, not having a scholarship running back still, um, so you hate to see it, but that does mean we have to punt this ball away to Manchester. And we're about halfway through this first quarter, and nothing too crazy has happened yet. Um, Manchester and Bluffton, or <laughs> Manchester and uh, Earlham, both of us, we went free now in our first uh, possessions. As we get him to a third and long, and look at this. Nelson all by himself, nobody accounted for the screen, and it goes for a gain of 26 because of it. And so Manchester gets to keep their drive alive for right now. But let's see if we can bounce back and recover. As we got a first and ten coming up, he throws quickly onto the right hand side over to Leon Cleveland. That's good for a gain of nine. So a very short second down coming up here, and I wouldn't be shocked if they ran it. And they do with Ward, and while the defense steps up and makes some nice plays for sure, they still end up picking up that first down once again. But hey, we got them third and long though. Let's get them off, these boys off the field. They trying to run a screen. And there's nobody there. We contain the screen really well. And so 4th and 10, Manchester, they actually have to go ahead and punt this football right back to us, man. You'll love to see it. As the kick is up, Cameron Frost going to try to get the fair catch, but he muffs it. And it's a terrible bounce, too. And so that's how we get our first turnover of the game and our defense now having to come and make a huge stop for us right now and third and five coming up here if we can get these guys off the field the very least that would be fantastic for our hopes and dreams as turner dropping back trying to throw towards the end zone it's a touchdown marcus garner with a 22 yard catch in the back of the end zone and that's how manchester's gonna get on the board first but wait a minute 
there is another booth reveal and it looks like you know Gardner might have stepped out of bounds looks like he didn't actually get that foot down length they um you know originally mentioned and so that being said it does mean that we gotta go ahead now you know and we hold him to a field goal so that's really good for us um as honestly i don't know how cameron frost didn't catch that ball it literally hit him on the helmet but there's nothing we can do about now as marcus gardner he makes another catch not for a touchdown but it is a first and ten for the spartans as turner drops back and throws to the left hand side gets it to leon cleveland and he just levels Caden Doman before he's finally forced out of bounds. As we get into the final stages of this first quarter, it's a toss play to the right-hand side. Ward has the outside and is going to break, almost break a tackle before RJ Greenway steps up in there and narrowly prevents the first down. As now second and inches, Turner dropping back on a throw quickly out to Ward over on the right-hand side. This time, looks like uh, maybe uh, it was either Cameron Frost or Somebody else ended up uh, getting lit up like a Christmas tree. But it is, yeah, the first quarter, though. And we're not doing too bad against the defending conference champions. We're only down by three points. At, but can we keep him out of the end zone once again? Ward somehow gets away from that tackle. We had guys there, but they didn't decide to wrap up for whatever reason. I have never seen that before. That is, that is some EA stuff right there, man. You hate to see it. And we're down 10 to nothing here as we try to get our offense right back on track. Terrain Patton going to run it up the gut for a five-yard gain. As now we got second and five now. Thanks to the five-yard run from Patton. Going to go ahead, rock the speed option, and Miami takes it up the middle. This time picking up seven yards on the ground. That's his first carry of the day, too. As now first and 10 coming up. Miami dropping back. Throwing it over the middle to Adam Hill the third in traffic. Able to make the, the concentrated catch for six yards. Because we got a second and four coming off here this time. Play action. But there's a flag on the play. We try to set up that bubble screen. It wasn't working whatsoever. And look at this. They're going to call it offensive pass interference on us too. And so now we got second and long coming up here. Just trying to make it. At least a reasonable uh, third down coming up, but we can't complete that pass either, unfortunately. So third and long coming here. As now we need a big play from Miami. As Ewa Gallier drops back, gets it to Henry B. York quickly on the screen, throws it on the money this time around. And Henry B. York does just enough to pick up the first down. So, you know, disaster avoided. Able to keep the drive going. Let's see how long we can maintain it. As Miami has to run for his life. Ua Gallie gets out of bounds to avoid the hit and picks up 10 in the process. Another first down for the Quakers. As we call another uh, passing set. Trips on both sides. Valhelm breaking multiple tackles and ends up picking up 8 yards. Okay, Valhelm. I see you, my guy. Is now second and two. Going to throw it again. This time to Henry B. York, the walk-on receivers. Putting in some work, putting in some extra effort for sure. As we have another first and ten coming up here. As Miami dropping back. Throwing to the right hand side. Gets it to Danny Carson. And he ends up picking up 14 on that one. As we got another first and ten coming up here. As Miami going to hand it off. He's got some queen running room and he's in the end zone. Touchdown. Earlham. And Miami Uagalie gets a clean slate and runs it in the end zone. And we're only down by a field goal in defending conference champions. So, team's playing pretty good, all things considered. But let's see if we can go ahead and pick it up as Justin Burden ends up getting beaten man covered. So, not a great look, but it is what it is. As now, first and ten. Turner going to hand it off to Ward. He's got some space to work with. Breaking multiple tackles before he's finally brought down. They might credit that to Giante McQuarren. But still 12-yard rush for Ward. As Brian Turner will try to pass it again. This time going deep downfield. It's a perfect throw. Jeff McGee. 45-yard touchdown. And the Spartans score once again. And they respond. 
So it's back to a 10 point game. And now we'll see if Irwin can respond as well. Let's see if we can get it going here as Adam Hill the third gets his off right with a 15 yard catch. That's going to be good for his second catch of the day. As now second and 11 coming up. Miami dropping back. Trying to try to throw it over the middle. Gets it to Jakeem Short. It's a great throw, but you got to make the catch for your guy even in traffic. So now third and long coming up here as Miami in the shotgun dropping back. Going to try to throw it over the middle and it's nearly intercepted. And we'll have to punt this football away, unfortunately. So defense got a job to do. Try to keep this uh, score close. As Turner drops back, throws to the right-hand side. Gets it to Leon Cleveland again. And it goes for a gain of nine. So, you know, second and short coming up. Four of uh, Spartans following that pass play. And they're going to end up picking up the first down once again with Leon Cleveland. Getting involved once more. His fourth catch of the day. As the Spartans going to go ahead and run no huddle. We sometimes have trouble with this with the lack of depth that we have on the squad. And you can tell too because Leon Cleveland is just wide but naked open. You know over in the middle and finding the soft spots in our zone frankly. You know got to be able to tie it up. So we do switch to man. See if we can have some better results with that. As Turner throws to the left hand side. This time... Gets it over to Kurt Gunn, who guns it for 12 yards in his first, you know, appearance on the score sheet. As Turner drops back once more, Turner looking around. This time going to scramble. Haven't seen that much today, but he's got some wheels. And Seth Gray eventually able to bring him down, but a 27-yard gain. Manchester going to go ahead and take their first timeout, though. As now we got first and 10 coming up, Garner. Gonna go ahead. You'll run this option. And he's on the outside. And Giante McGlurin does push him out of bounds. Potentially saving a touchdown. But can we keep him out though? Third and three. Ward or Turner <laughs> dropping back. Thrown to the left hand side. Gets to the Kurt gun. And they're giving him the first down. Oh my goodness. We even had a zone there. It just shows that we have to get better across the board still. Even though we have some promising young players. As Ward going to go ahead, try to run it up the middle. We do keep him out in the end zone at the very least. We use one of our timeouts too. So we're down 20 to 7, but we have a chance to, you know, try to change the stem of the tide before going into the locker room. As Justin Burden going to go ahead. He's taking it down the sideline, and it's a nice return. Exactly what we needed as our offense has struggled over the course of today. As we got a first and ten with a minute left. It's Miami throwing over the middle. Find St. Valhelm, and it's already Manchester territory, baby. Let's go get it. As Miami looking for a call on the sideline. Going to drop back to pass in the shotgun. He's looking around and just going to go ahead and scramble it himself. Almost uh, gets the first down. And uh, we didn't get out of bounds, apparently. So we got to call one of our timeouts. Was hoping to save it for a little bit later, but we at least still have one timeout left to work with as Miami throws over the middle. Great catch by Jariah Bond, reaching back to get that one as it wasn't a great throw by Ua Gallie. But now we got another first and 10 to work with in the no huddle. Five wide set over the middle to Henry B. York, who almost gets it in the end zone. But what are we on the one inch line though? As Miami will try to throw it in, but taking a sack on the next play. Not what you want to see. And I'm still trying to go ahead and save this timeout so we call a play as fast as possible. Is now second and goal. Trying to throw it to the back of the pylon, but St. Valhelm makes the adjustment. And we're in the end zone again. Touchdown, Earlham. And what a great drive to end the first half. We're playing the defending conference champions. We're only down by six points, second half coming soon. So let's go to work, man. Second half officially underway. Let's see if we can take care of business. Manchester does have the ball first to begin this second half. So however this drive go might go ahead and dictate how the rest of this game is. As we do go ahead now, first and ten now coming up is now. Garrett going to go ahead and uh, be moved on a motion. Throwing over the middle and a beautiful catch by Jeff McGee. 
who one hands that thing as well. And it's a seven yard gain as a result of it. As two plays later now, we got a third down coming up for the Spartans. But Turner's going to end up picking up once again a short catch. You know, just got to be a little bit mindful of where the sticks are if you're on the defensive end. So he can prevent these short third down conversions. But for now, first and ten, going over the middle, looking for Kurt Gunn, but ends up dropping that pass, thankfully. He had a lot of space to work with, too. It's now second and ten coming up. Turner going to go ahead. He gets hit as he's pitched, but he has plenty of space to work with down the sideline. Izzy Ray able to eventually track him down and get him out of bounds, but not very good option defense whatsoever. As we have another first and ten coming up here. Turner taking it to the right-hand side. Got some space. And Justin Burden gets juked out his shoes. And it's a 27-yard score for a touchdown. Devin Ward putting on the skates. And the first drive is good for the Spartans. Is now first and ten. Trying to throw it to Deontay uh, Short. But uh, that's no good. Uh, that ain't it, Chief. And it's incomplete as a result of it. As now we're trying to set up a play action pass. As Miami looking around. Good, trying to get it over to Jariah Bond. But he throws it behind him. He had him open for a second. But he just got to throw a better ball than that. And now third and ten coming up. As Miami looking around. Going to throw it over to Adam Hill to third. And he does the rest. Picking up a first down for the Quakers. And it keeps the drive going as a result of it. Let's see if we can keep the positive momentum going, though. First and ten. Miami having to drop back again. Trying to throw it over the right-hand side. Triple coverage. Was hoping that Danny Carson can reach up and make that grab, but couldn't use her that one. And it's second and ten now as a result of it. But a nice read option here as Miami ends up picking up the first down on the ground. Good for a gain of 11. As we got a couple plays later now, I'm going to try to run that read option once again. As Miami taking it out, going to go ahead and spins down and going to be marked just one inch shy. It'll be interesting to see how we go ahead and play this out. And actually going to try and go ahead and pass it, which is really surprising. But hey, I'm not the, uh, the uh, coordinator, but Jakeem Short had the play, but he drops it once again. And Earlham's going to go for it here. Try to pick up the last inch needed. But Terrain Patton can't get downfield soon enough. And it's a turnover on downs as a result of it. So Manchester going to take over at about midfield. Thanks to our lack of ability for fourth down conversions. As Brian Turner, he gets hit as he's thrown. But still throws a dot over to Kurt Gunn as well. But we have a penalty. And they're calling roughing the passer. Dude threw it. Literally as we are hitting him and they're going to call roughing the passer on it. So that's basically half the distance to the goal as a result of it. And it's going to be inside the red zone too on top of it. So now David Ward picks up six yards and just making it too easy for the Spartans offense here in the second half. Especially with that penalty as Warner is going to hand it off to Ward. He uh, just obliterates RJ Greenlake into the next century. And David Ward gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Spartans. And it's now a 20-point deficit that Earlham is facing. But we've come back from worse in this season. And Terrain Pan's actually able to get a nice run as well. He ends up picking up eight. And I'm pretty sure that's his best run of the entire day so far. But we need our passing game to get going here. And we need it bad. A second and two. Miami looking around. Going to try to throw it over to the right-hand side. Finds St. Valhelm. He's got some space to work with, too, and is forced out of bounds. A 30-yard catch. But we're starting to stall out once again as we have third and long. Trying to get to the left-hand side. Joakim Short going to be just one yard shy here. And Earlham settling for a field goal. And we're down 34-17 to in this third quarter. Definitely not how we wanted to come out of the locker room, but we're not done yet. We just need some plays to happen. All right, so here we go, and we do get that one play. We had the ball right back, so maybe we can get back in it as Miami trying to make something happen, but gets his. He's thrown. Incompletion. 
is now third and nine coming up here trying to run this spacing concept i don't know what they want to try and accomplish but here we are it's miami looking around good trying to throw it to right hand side to adam hill the third who gets on field and gets the first down for Earlham. you love to see it great awareness to get on field knowing where the sticks are and it keeps our drive alive as we got first and ten miami taking a sack though as they do a great job of containing the pocket a 10-yard loss caused by Ben Sapp. And now it's second and 20 now. As Miami trying to make something happen, trying to engineer another comeback, looking for Jakeem short by the sticks, but couldn't get a great ball over to him. As now, since we got third and 20, might as well do a halfback draw, try to catch him off guard, but Manchester was just more than ready for it, unfortunately. Another loss as fourth and 23. And we're going to have to go for it. We don't really have much of an option at this point here in this fourth quarter. Just trying to get something going here. As we try to throw it to RB. And it just turns into an arm punt. As Manchester, they're able to go ahead and get that interception, unfortunately. It's our second interception of this game. Actually, not second interception. First interception. But our second turnover. But it was either that or turnover on downs. And at least it gives us you know a little bit more space for our defense to work with. As Ward actually tries to pass it and does complete it over to Holy Cross, who ends up picking up six. We don't see that very often, but they bamboozled us a little bit right there. But we can still get them off the field despite that. Third and five coming up here. As we have a... I've never seen this glitch before. But look at this. Literally a layup for our defense. Because we had the glitch on Manchester. It was going to benefit us. But they call face mask on Matthew Sands. So we completely lose that layup. But, man, that is tough to take in. I've never seen that glitch before either. Um, hopefully I don't have to see it again. Because that was, that was just a really weird sequence that just occurred right there. As Marcus Garner you know, picks up seven as now. Got second and three coming up here. Turner in the shotgun. Five wide set and finds McGee. Justin Byrne able to bring him down, but another first down for the Spartans once again. Is now first and ten coming up here. Is now Turner dropping back, throwing over the middle. Finds Todd Reed. Is RJ Greenwake able to bring him down for seven? As we've got second and three coming up here. Spartans continuing to dominate the second half. And it continues here as Kurt Gunn gets the first down and almost gets into the end zone as well. Another first down for the Spartans. Oof. But now second and goal. Turner dropping back. Going to try to run it in the end zone. And he spins in. And Seth Gray could not stop him in time, unfortunately. Touchdown, Spartans. And that makes it 41-17. to And at this point, we're just trying to get some positive momentum going because... We have not done a very good job here in this second half whatsoever. We were only down by a field goal for a second there, but, I mean, it's not looking good for us now for sure. Once we get a miracle, it's going to be a big loss for us once again. But a nice throw, though, to St. Valhelm, though, at the very least. That was a dot for 21. Is now first and 10. Miami getting the troops to the line quickly as he drops back. Throws to the right-hand side. Gets it to St. Valhelm again. That may or may not have been out of bounds, so we call no huddle once more. Just to make sure that they don't have time to reveal it, because they definitely would have had a case. There is... We almost get intercepted on the next play. Terrence Willie reaching up to the ceiling and taking care of business. As we'll now have a second and ten, thanks to the incompletion. As Miami trying to throw to St. Valhelm, but he drops it again. Leading to third and long coming here. Is now... Third and ten. Miami dropping back. Throwing over the middle. A dot to Jakeem Short. He's got space to work with. And it's a first down for the Quakers. 32 yards downfield. And at least get it to first and goal at the very least. Is now Miami dropping back. He's looking around. Going to try to throw it to the end zone. He finds Henry B. York. And he makes the catch for his quarterback. Great in provision. These guys are on point, at least on that drive. 
But look at this. We're going to go for two points as well. Trying to make it a two-score game as we try to get it to Xavier James. But it's incomplete, though. So 237 left here. Going to have to go ahead and try to go for some onside kicks at this point. Uh, this probably will not be good whatsoever. The angle was there, but we don't get the bounces that we ended up needing. So we're still down by free possessions. And now the Spartans have the football here once again but we do get them off the field so maybe with 104 left we can get another uh score uh that would be really cool for us as adam hildeford would have been a goat for making that catch but unfortunately drops that one so now second and ten coming up here miami dropping back finds danny carson over the middle and that's good for 12 yards as earl i'm gonna get that no huddle offense going here pretty quickly so we got another first and 10. Miami dropping back, throwing to the left-hand side. What a play by Adam Hildeford making that catch for his quarterback. As we're going to call the exact same play, we liked what we saw. Let's see if we can get it to Adam Hill again, and he does. Another catch for Adam Hildeford. 10 toes down movement in full force here. And we got 49 seconds left. We can still do something here. Miami. Dropping back, throwing over the middle, looking for Jariah Bond. But he doesn't have those good hands like Austin because he ends up dropping that one. It's now second and ten now coming up for the Quakers. As Miami in the shotgun, dropping back, trying to throw it to Jariah Bond, but there was just not enough air for it. That's just how this game has been in the second half. Just couldn't get anything of substance going until it was far too late. Like, I don't even know what Miami was trying to do there, but it simply wasn't it. And, you know, M Manchester going to have the ability to go ahead, you know, and run out the rest of his clock. But look at this. They're going to be able to break multiple tackles and to, you know, rub some salt on the wound. They get a last second touchdown on us as well. You absolutely hate to see it. And Manchester... Yo, they end up dominating the second half, and it carries them to a big win here at home for them. And we end up losing this game by a final score of 48-23. to We played better than what the scoreboard has shown, but, I mean, we still got dominated in the second half. And we certainly need to work on that going forward, just continue to develop our guys. But that being said, let's go ahead and check out the stats for our guys in this one. All right, man, so we do end up losing this game. We fall to three and five here in our second season. And if you really think about it, it's kind of the opposite of the Bluffton game in the previous episode, because like we were able to keep it close with a team that was defending conference champion, you know, in the first half, but then in that second half, Manchester just kind of blew it wide open for us. And, you know, there was just nothing that we could do to, you know, try to stave the tie for us in that second half. So. I mean, we've, we fall to 3-5, and five, but we put up a better fight this time around than back when we uh, played these guys back in Season 1. Checking out the stats for our guy, though, Miami Uagawe. You know, he had another solid game, all things considered. He had to throw the ball 50 times, which is something that I do want to try to avoid going forward. But he did throw for 379 yards, two touchdowns. And then he did have two interceptions in that fourth quarter when we were just trying to, you know, do a little too much there towards the end. But overall, he had a solid passing game. But, you know, the running attack, though, was something that we certainly struggled with yet again. Dwayne Patton, you know, he still is our starting running back, but he couldn't do anything with it. He only had 14 yards off of 11 carries. Miami had most of our uh, ground game attack, and he ended up with 41 yards on the ground, but did have a touchdown at the very least. At receiver, we kind of uh, did a pretty decent job of spreading the ball around quite a bit, but we had two guys that were either over 100 yards or, you know, over 100. Uh, Adam Hill, he led the way with receptions, AH3 with eight catches for 98 yards, but no touchdowns, though. St. Volhelm, on the other hand, was a surprising lead receiver for us today. He had seven catches for over 100 yards. He was having a nice day, the uh, sophomore Alabama product. Then the other guy to get into the end zone, Henry B. York. He ended up with four catches and 50 yards. Whereas Shaquem Short, he had a you know rough day for his standards. Four catches for 72 yards, but three drops. You hate to see it. 
Over on the on our blocking, Nate Coleman and Jay Downing each allowed a sack yet again, so you hate to see that. Defensively, though, Josh Brown led the way. He had eight total tackles in this one, one of which was a TFL. He didn't lead the way in TFL, so we had Seth Gray, you know, who was a beast in that backfield. Four solo tackles, but three of them were TFLs. RJ Greenwake and Izzy Ray able to get in there multiple times. And we had a couple of sacks as well, Seth Gray and Josh Brown each getting into the backfield but no turnovers once again the lack of turnovers for us has been a problem and i hope we can address that here in the future all right man so while that manchester game you know didn't go exactly how we wanted it to go we do have our home we're back at home once again we're gonna play against rose holman in the next episode and they're actually one in seven right now and for the very first time uh lee corso is actually going to be rocking for us outside of the game's that we have against Transylvania so it's gonna be a good one to see if we can prove Lee Corso right so I mean that being said if you enjoyed this episode I need you guys to do me a favor and please smash that like button for me as well as hit subscribe you have to be brand new and like what you see here on the channel this is John Chick Game on the mic signing off but hoping you're all out there having a wonderful day take care everybody